up everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Stocky Exchange. Today I talk with three top traditional media managers from Northern Michigan, where we talk Nielsen ratings, subscription services, and how traditional media competes in the digital age. Also, we're giving away free stuff. Hello and welcome everybody to this episode of the Stocky Exchange. Today we are talking with uh, local media about marketing, the latest trends, and how they're staying afloat with uh, the ever-changing industry. Uh, so today I have Chris from WTCM, I have Bill from 9 and 10, and Luke from uh, the TC Ticker, Business, Ex Business News, TC Business News, and uh, the Express uh, here in town. So thank you gentlemen, appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good content here. Thanks and uh, let some people know about the latest and greatest in traditional media. Um, so we're going to get right into the questions. First thing is, uh, as you all know, work in the industry, Nielsen Ratings uh, is a big player in terms of ratings for stations, uh, the ability to create shows, and what's liked, what's not liked. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, do you like the rating system, what's better, and what, uh, I know they're making some changes this fall, so let's kind of let people know about all the opportunities of you know how shows get rankings and the best way to um, you know understand them. So, Bill, you well, want to start? Well, yeah, we use Nielsen all the time. It's mm -hmm. how we are. It's our scorecard. Um, Nielsen's making a major change in our market. It, it is in, uh, installing things called code uh, code readers that will be next to the television sets in approximately 400 homes in northern Michigan. They've already picked the people. They've mm -hmm. already installed the code readers. They were tested in May, and they go full online in the November book. Mm -hmm. um, and those are going to be replacing the traditional paper versions. Yeah, right, traditional paper diaries that were sent to you. You filled them out. You had to put in things, and they were sporadic at best on how much data that came out. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, with the new code readers, where we have 400 of them installed, that will get more data about more things, about more shows, and we'll try to be more accurate. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. The more data you get, the better results you can get out right. of it. Uh, Chris? Uh, we don't subscribe. We did. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if, I can, if I can give some opinion on yeah. Nielsen, um, we do think it's flawed. But the media buyers that represent really, truthfully, a small uh, population of the uh, buying community they are comfortable with it. They recognize that it's flawed, but they need something uh, to support their industry and their decision making. Mm -hmm. um, quite honestly, uh, local business, which is our bread and butter, uh, does not care a whole lot about it's ratings. Right. They, they're results oriented. So um, it comes down to relationship selling, which we're all... Uh, uh, keenly aware of its importance. So um, a good salesperson for radio, for television, for print can meet a prospective client, uh, gain a, a certain level of trust with that prospect, and, um, and engage the customer into uh, uh, advertising uh, and, and, and looking for results as opposed, as opposed to, you know, uh, Using a Nielsen rating as a benchmark. Yeah, what, what, uh, yeah it, what uh, poll position am I buying and, and uh, how many, uh, uh, what, what's my cost per thousand? Mm -hmm. uh, those kind of metrics aren't terribly important. So I think Chris is right. It's, a, it's about results. Ultimately, it is about mm -hmm. results. But I think Nielsen for television, it gives people a place to start. Is, and it gives a, a place for what program to start with and what, what do the best ratings and what are trending. And I agreed with you, there's flaws in the system, like there is in any testing system, there's always something in there mm -hmm. that can be better, and we hope this will be better. 
Um, we have the highest ratings, so we may suffer the most. We don't know. We have no idea. <laughs> but um, it, it is one of those things that you got to keep technology going. You have to be, have better sample size. People want better sample. We want, we want to make it as accurate as possible. And then it's up to the companies to price their product accordingly on what they deliver and the results. But uh, that, that's, why, that's why we use, our industry uses Nielsen. I think and, consume, and go ahead. Go ahead. Ultimately, the, uh, the big drawback that we see with, uh, with Nielsen is the, the methodology and ultimately the, out, the, the results hinge on whether or not they were able to get a representative sample of whatever that geography right. is. Mm -hmm. And we joked in radio for years that if you really want to score well uh, with a rating service, program a station that appeals to old women. Because when Nielsen calls them up on the phone, I love to talk to them. they'll answer <laughs> it and they'll agree for a small mm -hmm. amount of money, a trivial amount of money, uh, to, to fill out their, their uh, listening habits. Uh, I would guess that the four of us, if, if Nielsen were to call any one of us right now, we probably wouldn't even answer it because well, the, the we funny wouldn't recognize is, the number. I'm a Nielsen subscriber right now. They, they literally, I just started my, my paper survey a couple days ago and they, they call me three, four times a day because I don't answer the phone because it comes up as unknown. And if and you did answer it, then they Somebody's, go on for 20 minutes about everything under the sun, and I'm like, what are you actually calling me? Did you get your paper? Yeah, and, dude, like you sent in the mail, I got it. <laughs> and for $2, are you willing to fill it out? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean... This You're not likely even to get that far into the call before you click it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's our biggest beef with any kind of a survey mm -hmm. is how, how can you effectively get a representative sample? And I, and I think with digital technology these days, uh, I mean, a social media website, you have the opportunity to get instant digital analytics, which are... There's no, I mean, there's a minute flaw, but if you look at the, the, the wavering of Nielsen versus analytics of a website, you're not even in the same ballpark. So I think moving to a digital-based system where you can really gather better content and better data is just going to be better for them, but like, they need to be able to keep up with the speed of how fast other industries are gathering data and good quality data. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Anything to add, Luke? No, it's not really our thing. It's more of a broadcast thing. So, okay, we've been immune to it. So, obviously, we're in a, we're in the digital age now, um, and that's really really interesting transition from a lot of what you guys have been doing. So, specifically, what have each of you been doing to really grab hold of the, the digital age, mobile website, uh, social media, to really drive forward your business and and distribution side of what you're doing to keep up with the way people want to consume information. We'll start with you. Well, we have three different products. Northern Express, which is a, a weekly newspaper, the Traverse City Business News, which is a monthly newspaper, and then the Traverse City Ticker, which is an all online daily publication and website. And so they're all sort of unique, different animals. I inherited, I purchased the Express about a year and a half ago, and that's really all print. And so that's been, uh, that, we're right in the heart of this. We're overhauling everything we're doing, our entire digital platform for all three products. So there's a lot of opportunity there, but we're behind, frankly. Uh, the business news is a really interesting small niche in a small town, but um, again, we're also behind there. We're just getting online. And the ticker is just a rocket ship. I mean, it's just something we created five years ago because of this whole trend. And, and uh, we're just hanging on for dear life because of its rapid growth. So there's um, opportunities across the board, but they're all at sort of different spots of evolution. Mm -hmm. So how are, you using, how are you planning to use the digital aspects of marketing and content distribution to pair with the print side of what you're doing? So you're, you're going to continue the print magazine. Yeah. But how are you going to use the digital to promote it, uh, gain advertisers, distribute small bits of the content to get people interested to go, right. oh, i got to go get the the business news because I want to read this article. Yep, there's a lot of that sort of blocking and tackling with each of the print publications, but the beauty for us is, of course, the cross-selling and the cross-promotion between all three products so that we can, uh, say, for instance, publish a feature in the Northern Express about uh, some event or some controversy, and meanwhile the business news can cover it from a slightly different angle, and then online we can publish a video of it and get people engaged in it. So. We'll start to do more of that sort of cross-platform, cross-product promotion mm -hmm. because yeah. we can. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Bill? 
Well, we have many digital assets right now besides the web page and the, and the um, 9 and 10 News mobile site, mobile app, and the weather app. We're also, we've launched a new a division called Northern Michigan Digital, and what it does is it helps clients do search engine um, marketing optimization and real-time bidding right now is the thing we're getting into because what we want to do is, and what broadcast does as our part of it is market your um, company and whatever way you need to market it, that's what we want to be a part of is, is marketing. Um, on, the, on the other side, the content, that's the sales side. On the content side, uh, 9 and 10, we use, um, we put out the platforms of the app, we, we send things out. In the old days, the, the, the common logic was you should hold everything for your 6 o'clock news. You shouldn't send it out. Don't post it on your webpage. Don't mm -hmm. do it anything. Don't tell anybody about it. Um, don't even talk about it on the scanner because somebody else will hear about it. Now, as soon as you know pulls it, it up on the ham radio. You know, as soon as we, as soon as things happen, now it's it's we tweet it, it's on Facebook, it's out, and it, and you're right, there's more information when it comes to our stories, but it also gives us that interaction um, with our viewers, and we have 150,000 people on social media between all the platforms who follow us, or like mm -hmm. us, whatever they want to do, um, and 600,000 uniques plus on the web page. But they give you the feedback. They tell you more things than you can ever get in any kind of focus group or any kind of things. That interaction back and forth um, is is priceless. Yeah, with, with social media, you have a daily focus group running, and, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you got to do is ask. A, it's amazing what they say. It's amazing. It's amazing how they police it themselves. And people say, "Are you worried about it?" No, put it out there. Let it have it. You know. Excuse you know, exclusive of, you know, profanity or things like that, let them have at it and let people talk about it and don't be afraid of it. That's what I tell people mm -hmm. when I go to conferences. Don't be afraid of it. Go out and embrace it. It's the digital stuff is, is, is wonderful stuff. It's, I don't know what tomorrow's digital is going to be. And I don't think anybody <laughs> else does. No. And what I, what I tell about, I'm not afraid of, I, I don't want people to confuse, like when we talk about television with platform is, I don't, our job is to, is to make content. We, we produce news, we produce programming, we produce sports, we produce those things. I, as, as a content maker, I don't care what platform it goes out on. It doesn't matter to me if it's on a smartphone, it's on, it's on anything else. I used the analogy with you earlier, it's water. Um, you have many devices in your house that use water, from dishwasher to tubs to things like that. But they all need water to work. And the digital aid needs content. Now, who produces the content is the important part. And because there will be somebody who will come up with something else on how to distribute your content elsewhere. But the content makers, and these gentlemen are content makers, those are people who will thrive. Mm -hmm. So on, on top of that, before we get to Chris, we, you're, you're developing content, and you're using Nielsen to help kind of rate how many people are, are consuming your content to help you guys build a business model for advertising. Right. With, uh, with subscription services like Netflix, Amazon, uh, Hulu, uh, Comcast just launched their own streaming service. How do you, which is at a cheaper price, so how do you, com how do you compete with, to make people use your content, which then helps you get more viewership, which helps you drive a higher advertising price to, to stay more profitable. Mm -hmm. How are you guys, you, how are you trying to deal with uh, a potentially lower viewership because of other channels are distributing content, which could be better, could be worse, but at a cheaper price. Well, again, it comes back to the quality of the content and what people want to see. Mm -hmm. um, I think that model was proved out long, long, long time ago with a 100-channel, 200-channel universe. Channels have come and gone. If people don't watch it or they're not willing to pay for it or they don't have it, it's going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, we had many, many uh, newspapers, many, many magazines, many, many radio stations, many, many television stations, channels. Mm -hmm. it, they're going to come and go. Your, your job, and just like these gentlemen's job, is to bring the, the songs that, and country music that people want to hear or people are interested in. If you keep playing something that they don't want, you won't have, you won't have listeners. Or if you write articles about the people aren't interested, they're not going to subscribe. So the same thing with us. We have to bring things like the NFL, like local news, like World Cup soccer, um, NASCAR racing, people that want. And there will always be room for the niche um, channels in, in, in the spectrum. There always will be, just like there's always things for 
the niche person who wants a niche magazine like Architectural Digest, not mass media. Mm -hmm. I'm more mass media and trying to get a bigger one, but there will always be niche. And people will pay more for those niches because they cost more. But we hope. To yeah, because, but <clears throat> in gross dollars, the gross dollars will be for the broad delivery because it delivers the most eyeballs. But there is a, there's room for everybody mm -hmm. in, at this table. I believe there's room for all kinds. And, I, you know, again, Netflix and Hulu and, I mean, there's OTT over the top, which will be delivered, and CBS is in that, and we're, we'll be launching that this fall, and there'll be those kinds of subscriptions. But it's, it's just more ways, as I said, again, to deliver the water. That's all it is. Cool. And well, the other secret weapons that we have as compared to the bigger guys is the local uh, content and except for one of Luke's publications we're all free uh, so you know subscription services uh, you know I think that that free thing is is a pretty nice advantage uh, over, over pay TV and um, it's true, but Bill's right. The content, good content will win, period. It did in the 18th century. It will in the 21st century. Content's king. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, a big transition from, from my side as the person promoting from a marketing perspective is content versus context. And I think that that's changing a lot. Is you can have great content, but if it's delivered in the wrong format, in the wrong place, you've really lost people. So understanding how to tailor your message to the market that's, that's reading it, I think goes a long way in developing a good relationship and providing people the content that they want to see, but also how they want to see it. Whether it's on a mobile, it's on a computer, it's on a tablet, it's on their TV at home, it's mm -hmm. on their TV in the mm -hmm. basement, it's on their TV in the RV. Mm -hmm. I think that really tailoring the, the content specifically to how the person is receiving it, I think is going to be one of the next big, like kind of, everyone's going to grab hold of that and really manpower it and, and drive it forward. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, Chris's question for you just for radio is, how are you guys kind of leveraging your content to compete against other people for, for listeners and for advertising dollars? Um, you're talking digital, or are uh, you talking I'm just talking the station speaking. in general. Like, what, what are you doing to kind of differentiate yourself? So if there's two country stations in town, mm -hmm. uh, 102.9 and 103.5, how are you pulling advertising dollars instead of marketing on this country station and your country station? Because you don't use Nielsen, so you don't have that right. benchmark, which you could use. Yeah. So what, other than the personal relationships, which we discussed earlier, what, how are you using maybe any kind of marketing to really differentiate yourself? I, I don't think we're using marketing to distinguish from a, from a near format competitor. Mm -hmm. um, with us, it's years of service. Uh, next year, we celebrate 75 years doing this. Um, and that counts for a lot yeah. locally. Um, and then quality control. So we have to make sure that our over-the-air product is solid and it's not cheap to do that. So it requires some, some pretty hefty investment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really how you can, or how we can differentiate ourselves. And we use these two guys to, to promote uh, uh, awareness of our stations. Mm -hmm. I, I listen to Chris's station and I drive a lot in the 32 counties that we covered. And I have Sirius in the car, and I have all that kind of stuff. But I listen to Chris's station and Jack O'Malley in the morning because I like the interaction along with the music. I like what he provides, and I like some of his, his other stations and programming and how they program in their playlists better than the highway or some of the other stuff or the Pulse or his contemporaries. Mm -hmm. And it, it's choices, and I, I like those things. So as a consumer, I think he competes very well because he – provides something that's tailored to me or tailored to northern Michigan, if you will, rather than one-stop shopping across the country. Mm -hmm. I, and, I, and you mentioned that earlier, that, that local flavor really helps to, to drive people into, like, right, well, I, I, you listen to the show because you like right. Jack and, and his commentary right. and his banter, which really relates around what's happening here in northern right. Michigan. So, Well, our local content, we're mm -hmm. the only ones making local content. Yeah. There's a, exactly. you, it's just like your AP, AP News Star or, you know, whatever you want. There's a thousand people who will tell you what's happening in Iran today. There's very few people that are going to tell you what's happening in Kingsley. They're mm -hmm. just, they're just isn't, they're just isn't, and it's back to the content. It's just like, if you want local business, you, you, Not you take care, you go this, you want Traverse <laughs> City business. It says what it says. 
this is what's going to be there, and that's the content that's there. There's, but if you want to see Wall Street Journal, you can see Wall Street Journal, or you can see whatever you want on business, but it doesn't tell you about here. And that's, that's mm -hmm. it's, it's not cheap, but it's, it's relevant content that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that idea, just you know, keeping it local and using that as the competitive advantage against all the other possible mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. that are out there for you to spend your advertising dollars. I mean, it's endless. So offering that, that uh, consistent and quality local touch um, keeps you guys keeps We you going. always say that technology cannot compete with a really good live local DJ. We've been competing mm -hmm. against them for 15 plus years. Well, I also think, and you give Chris a lot of credit, and you're, you knew you just bought, I think local ownership means a lot. We're locally owned. And it can make a difference. It makes, yeah. I think it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference on how you look at something and how fast you react to mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And you keep your content relevant to your area rather than corporately, this is what we're going to do about X. Yeah, and by the and time it gets up the chain and back down, it's, it's hard to be here when you're not here. Right, and, and it's hard to react and it's hard to go. Plus, you know, when you're walking down the hall or you're in a grocery store, you get talked to, to about your product, you yep. get talked to your product. Yep. That's feedback that you want to hear, and you, you have to hear that. Mm -hmm. And that's why being local is important. Yeah, that, yeah I, I love that. That's, that's fantastic. Um, so we'll move on to the next question is uh, subscription services for news content radio. Uh, uh, certain print people are, you know, you can go to their website, which you can only see a little bit of the show. Mm -hmm. or you can see the first 200 words of the article, but then you got to pay $30 for the rest. What do you guys What do you guys think about that? Is it gonna Is it gonna stay? Is it gonna stick? Is it gonna expand? Are people gonna just get rid of that? Um, and and kind of let's talk about that ideas. Uh, if you think subscription services are good or I think it depends. The jury's still out on paywalls. You know, for instance, we'll probably head that way with the business news. It's a very small, loyal mm -hmm. audience with sort of high price, high value content that we just can't give away. But with the Express and the ticker, the content is free and always will be free, and that's just our format. And um, you know, we make up for it in other ways with a bigger audience. So, you know, I think paywalls have their place. We don't have any right now, but as I said, we're probably headed that way with the business news. Okay. So, are you gonna have so the because obviously the print version is for sale, right? And then the digital version will just kind of mirror that, right? If you only exactly. want to consume it digitally, right? Okay. And that should help you in terms of cost of distribution. Uh, you know, printing and uh, of the actual physical paper as well. Yeah, I mean, we think we're in a little slightly different and hopefully better position in terms of print than, say, a daily paper. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a business I'd want to be in, printing a newspaper every day. So, But fortunately, we have sort of niches. We're very local. We have a very devoted audi audience. You know, it's, it's very targeted, and uh, that serves us well. You know, fortunately, peers like ours around the country in print are still doing very well while still making the transition to digital. Cool. Bill, what do you think? I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not smart enough to know. I don't, I don't know if uh, there's enough people who are willing to pay for a service. Only that, you only know if you've launched the service. You only know if you put the paywall up, uh, if there's enough, if there's a niche to solve it. I don't, I don't know. Um, we broadcast free over the air, but we're also part of uh, direct dish charter mm -hmm. um, they'll be o over the top Apple pay is coming out Netflix is out um, the people usually to me people pay for convenience and and to get it the way they want to get it um, if if they're willing to pay or a few a few dollars so they can get it commercial free when they want it when they want it mm -hmm. it might work if they it may not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and there's there's other people smarter who will figure that out. But the entrepreneur that takes the shot will find that out. Is um, I don't know that we'd ever would buy music over the over the web and download it to your phone. I mean, mm -hmm. the whole concept of a smartphone is like, well, you know, my dad who's 90 oh, says, why do you need that? He, and that's mm -hmm. just the mindset of the user. The user will determine whether I want it or not. Is it worth it to me? And that's an individual decision. I think there'll be lots of services that will be put out mm -hmm. and on scale if they can make it work. Um, I think it, they'll be very successful if they can make it work, if they can scale it. Okay. 
The problem is if you can't scale it, it just it doesn't. Scalability, it doesn't yeah. Much. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Chris? Yeah, I'm with Bill. I, I, I'm no expert on this stuff, but my, you know, my personal opinion on the digital space is that um, uh, consumers, I mean, the internet equals free. Mm -hmm. Everything is free. So to get somebody in the digital world to pay for information or pay for entertainment is, it seems pretty far-fetched to me, but um, I don't know. It's a tough gig. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I don't envy anyone who, That's a tough who's gig. trying to move into that world for sure. I mean, it's all, if you can create quality enough content that people are willing to pay for it, kudos to you. But like I said, it's scalability. If you can't put out enough quality content to make people have a need or a want for it, then I think you're... Yeah, well, the, I think a case is Netflix. Netflix had to re... What is it? A couple of years ago, they, they were out, they raised their prices, they lowered their prices, but the really thing that made them go is they got good quality content, they put out some good shows, that got people involved in mm -hmm. it, and it wasn't the price of what it is, uh, it was more about what am I getting as a value, and I think value plays is what consumers buy on. They don't buy on... I don't think price is a big issue, I think value is an issue. You know, you can pay, you know, a thousand dollars for something, but it's you know, it's a ten carat diamond. That's a great value. Yeah. Where they may not do that, and people have to value the diamond. They have to value what's there. Yeah, it's all about creating value no. proposition in all of your businesses. If you if you don't create that value for people, price is irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, and we look at it as I mean, our product has a paid subscription today, so they're paying for it in print. If they want to see it online, they're not going to find it anywhere else. So hopefully, they'll pay for it online. Mm -hmm. And we do put prices on our products. The price for radio is, for the next three minutes, we're going to play you some ads, mm -hmm. and we'll ask you to sit through and consume them, and then we'll get right back to the entertainment. Right. And I think everyone everyone right. has that. I mean, it's it's a pay-to-play service, and everyone, you guys have to stay afloat, and that's how you make money. Well we, well, we have costs. I mean, we have programming costs. That, of course. That now our programming suppliers are tying a lot of that cost to the pay services. You know, you know I'm involved with a d dispute with Dish TV right mm -hmm. now. Well, my my suppliers and specifically CBS and Fox, they charge me a franchise fee based on subscribers. And you have to have a business model that says I need to get more from the franchise fee than I'm paying to the to my suppliers. And currently they're not offering enough. So they're offering less than yeah. I have to pay. It's the analogy of when gas prices went up and it went from a dollar to two dollars, the price at the pump had to go up to follow those prices because the cost of gas went up. And with the cost, just like your cost of programming, cost of the NFL, the Major League Baseball, when you see people getting 25, 30 million dollars, mm -hmm. that does not come from ticket sales because the stadiums aren't big enough. It comes your max from, and revenue it comes from media is where it comes from and rights mm -hmm. fees and rights fees get mm -hmm. passed on. And the, your rights fees for your program and for what you have to put and what you run in articles and Yeah, thankfully that's not something we have to deal with. I mean you have the benefits of some of these national and international licenses and programming. Ours is all local and all independent and we're not tied to that, but there's trade offs, you know? Mm -hmm. There are trade offs. The and scale it, is quite different. Cool. So we're going to move on to the last question here, and uh, obviously we've heard, we've moved into a world of mobile-first um, consumption. It's it, there's no question about it. Uh, so what are you guys doing specifically in each of your respective businesses to move your content distribution to a mobile-first model and giving clients or giving you know potential people what they want? Obviously, we know people want it via mobile. So what are you guys doing to help curate your content for a mobile-first mentality? Um, moving forward? Well, I'd say honestly and candidly, I mean, we're, we're probably in last place and a long ways behind. I mean, this is probably the number one priority for me this year. We're in the, the thick of a major, major investment year. So we're overhauling everything we do online and it'll all be driven and focused on the mobile user. So it's, there's nothing more important for our business right now. Awesome. Well, we, we've launched for a few years now and 
people can help me, but I don't remember how long they've been out because they seem like they've been out forever. Mm -hmm. As apps, as is the as the mobile apps, as the weather app is separate with with radar and what's coming up and where they are, and you can use it anywhere in the world. It has all that stuff, and then moment news app comes out and um, and. Uh, as things come to us, as, as we have stories, we post them on them as fast as we can get them, as we can get results on them, and we try to just put that out as another distribution channel. That's what it is. It's just it's distribution. It's real time. Um, you use an iPad. Mm -hmm. I use an iPad. Um, a lot of people use um, tablets, desktops. It, and when we first launched all the, the online things, it was 80%, 90% was desktop. 10% maybe mobile. It's mm -hmm. flipped way around to it's 80% mobile and 20% desktop. And it's and most of the desktop viewing we see is mostly when people are at work. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they and they want to know. They come in, they check things, they check what's going on, what's planned. They may, you know, I stream um, some of Chris's stuff that comes through and listen to it. And um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's lots of mobile opportunities. There'll be some tomorrow we don't know about. Yeah, sure, sure, Chris. What, what radio is excited about right now is um, the mobile phones um, f right from the factory have little FM chips inside. Yeah. And overseas, those chips are activated. So radio sta uh, uh, consumers can pick up their local radio station. The phone becomes just like a little transistor handheld radio. In the U.S., the big uh, uh, cell companies... Uh, desperately want not to activate those chips because they want they love to, to use charge your data. data. Yeah, so uh, Sprint right now has activated the chips, and the the, the National Association of Broadcasters uh, has a really uh, compelling uh, push to consumers. Uh, ask your provider to to, to unlock to, it. To unlock it, mm -hmm. and it's um uh, it's a simple enough thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, of course that. That really uh, uh, roughs up their uh, their ruffles their feathers. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just having it, a conversation it, about this earlier. It's like cell phone companies used to charge for minutes, and then they're like, "Well, we can't do that anymore because now we have data to charge for. So screw the minutes, all you want." Mm -hmm. Now they're running out of data, but now we're running into things where Wi-Fi is becoming readily available anywhere you go. We have we have Wi-Fi in downtown Traverse City now, so mm -hmm. data usage is becoming less. Because Wi-Fi is available everywhere, so now what's their next revenue stream? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not going to go back to minutes because people aren't even calling that much anymore. It's not going to become data, so there's, there's going to be a big gap in that industry for how are they going to keep their infrastructure, that massive infrastructure mm -hmm. that cell phone companies have? How are they going to keep that alive? Mm -hmm. uh, the inside your and inside your your pad and inside the phone, and Chris has seen them out, in, out at the conventions. Is you can watch television through them. Broadcast all over the air. What? It's 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 everything's there. Mm -hmm. Everything's ready to go. It's just the availability and what you want to do, what you want to do with mm -hmm. it, and where mobile's going to go next. We know that we have, uh, and Chris is involved with it with big spectrum auction coming up, and they're going to we're going to be repacked and we're going to be pushed, and television's going to change in the next couple of years after the FCC changes things, and we'll probably have another generation of television come out. In the next, I'm, I'm predicting the next five, seven years, so we can use some of the more mobile aspects. Just like we went yeah. to a digital and we went to high def, we'll probably go to another. Because it's, it's changing. Next. It's changing. Yeah. It's changing quick, yeah. Don't miss a single episode of the Stocky Exchange Show. Visit the Stocky Exchange Facebook page, like our page, hover over the like button, and click get notifications and see first to never miss out on a show or post. So this is the part of the show where we ask a one-word question. It's a little lighter in conversation now. So uh, personally, all of you guys, in your free time, would you rather go to the beach or go to the backwoods? I'll say option C, which is big city. Okay, it doesn't follow the rules. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't take them anywhere. So big city for Luke. Yeah. Um, being a ginger and fair-haired, beach is not one of my <laughs> strong for you. suits. I can sizzle there, but I, I prefer to be golfing is what I would do. I'm going to go to option D. Okay. I'll go golfing. I'm, I'm off that. All right. and you stick, don't even answer the I'll question. Stick to Let's the go rules. E here. I'll no. stick to the rules. Uh, 
I'm a redneck, so I'm going backwoods. Backwoods. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll definitely pick the backwoods as well. Just went camping all weekend, so now I just got to talk to the old lady in the camping. She's more of an air conditioning big city. Big city, big city all right, right. Good luck so, with that. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. I think we yeah. had some really great content. Super, super for me to learn, like, where your industries are going, how you're tackling things. I love to hear that you guys are, like, really grabbing onto mobile mm -hmm. and running forward mm -hmm. with that. I think it's fantastic. I look forward to seeing the new product. Both of you guys, Nielsen, I'm really excited for to, to get awesome new quality data to make better informed decisions on. You know, the better data you have, the better decisions you guys can make. And I love the local concept of what you're sticking with. And now you guys are just, no matter how big and wild this big digital world is, you, you stick to the simple things will continue to work for you. And that's, I think, how local radio stays consistent with good quality content. Give that local personal touch with your sales. And if you keep putting out a quality product, people will keep... Uh, keep staying with it. So we do have a couple giveaways today. Uh, we didn't talk about those earlier. So um, have you guys go to stockyexchange.com slash blog for all the show notes from this. Uh, we're going to put all the social media channels up for these guys. Check them out on Facebook. Link to it up on social media. Um, hopefully you'll have a subscription service online for the, the, the business news later this year. So you guys can have a subscription there. Um, anything that you guys uh, want to add here at the end? Anything that was unsaid. No, plenty more to be said, but thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Cool. I was in a section of the show where you guys can ask me a question. The old stocky exchange. Hmm. Let's Great. not all jump at once. Well, what are your, you're obviously into this digital space. Uh, what, what's the cool and exciting short-term mm -hmm. thing that you're seeing? Uh, for, for, for your industries, I, th I think for, for the same to say for traditional media, I think micro content is, is huge right now. By that, I mean short, small, uh, and whoever is the, uh, like I said, speed getting it out as soon as it happens. I think that has a huge impact on the ability to create conversation and distribute information. Um, and then learning how the, your distribution centers work now, like social media, like Facebook and Twitter and what it takes to get information out. Two years ago, Facebook, you put something on there, everyone in the world saw it like automatically. But now, you know, organic reach on Facebook's pretty much dead unless you get a ton of interaction. You post something, a little, some text, maybe a couple people see it. You post a photo, more people see it. You post a small video, tons of people see it. So learning how that works and really optimizing content and context is huge for almost every industry. If you can take the best piece of content and learn how people on Twitter want to receive it, how people on Facebook want to receive it, how people on Instagram want to receive it, t telling the same story four or five different ways via each distribution channel, doing the people who can do that the best will win the distribution game today, tomorrow. All right. You never know how, uh, what, you know, a new thing. There's live streaming services out there like mm -hmm. Periscope. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, people want something exclusive they love it you know no i can't get it anywhere else or it happened right now and you know the fear of missing out it's been around forever just like i mean traditional old tv shows you want to watch every week and you don't want to miss that week because you might not hear what happened in the show and then you get the spoiler alert and your friend told you like that concept of fear of missing out is becoming so much quicker than a weekly television show it's by the minute it's who heard who tweeted about it first and then boom, it explodes so i think the quicker you can do something and the more you can understand the difference between content and context, the people who do that the best win via each of their distribution channels. And I love the concept, which I've said on every show so far, is the difference in marketing between width and depth. You don't want to be on so many channels, but you're only putting a little bit of effort into each of them. It's better to take three or four channels and just rock at them. Create those conversations, create the relationships, create an understanding, build your, your relationships, create that personal connection through each of those because taking the concept of the impersonal digital and making it personal by going very deep in the conversations, that's how I think people are gonna win the best with social. And when you're, when you're dealing with your clients, mm -hmm. what do you look for in social and media and, and the other kind of things we look for I know you're, we call that you own a channel, or you own a program, or you own a time period. What, what do you look to evaluate the results that you, you get back? I mean, we can go mm -hmm. out and do 
uh, a bunch of social, but if I don't sell cars, for instance, um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm from your aspect. I, what are you looking for? Yeah. So, Luke, can you hand me that there, that book there? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, a local, uh, another entrepreneur, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. If you guys haven't read this book, it's called Jab 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 Right Hook, and this is for me uh, a true belief that I have in this book and the concept of social marketing, um, and it's all about a boxing concept, jab, 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 red hook. So it's you're jabbing them with content, you're jabbing good quality content, small bits of information that you're giving people quality, giving them value, give value, give value, give value. And then the right hook is where you go for your ask. So it's give quality content, but then advertise with me. Here's free content on the ticker, free content on the free ticker, free content on the ticker. Have a subscription to the TC Business News for awesome content that you can only get here. So that's the concept of giving value to create that relationship and then subtly asking for um, asking for the sale, basically. I mean, always be asking. Everyone knows ask for the sale, number one rule in sales. But people want value first and not the ask first. So you start building those relationships locally and then eventually you can, you can give them the right hook. So I definitely recommend reading that book um, to really get your mind around the concept of how to understand ROI of social media and how to generate revenue from it rather than just seeing it as something we have to be doing. I have to be on Twitter, I have to be on Twitter. You don't, you, you have to be if you, I mean, in, in your distribution land, it's, it's pretty, pretty important, but how do you monetize it and how do you make money back from it? This, that's a really, really great book to read in terms of understanding monetization and ROI of your social media efforts. That's where I look. That's where I tell my clients it's give value, give value, give value, and then ask for something. Don't, and it's traditionally been the other way around. It's, yay, promotion, 20% off today. Yay, we're giving away this. You know, it's, it, you're always asking for the sale. People on social don't want to read that. It's not, they don't want to see advertisements. That's why Facebook and all of them have spent so much time with these massive algorithms to realize what content you see in your newsfeed and how many of them are advertisements and where they are and how they're tailored to you. And people want to see things that are interesting. They don't want to be interrupted. But if it's part of the flow, it's less interrupting to them. Interesting. Any questions? No, I'm just soaking it all up. Cool, man. Well, thank you guys again so much for coming on the show. I think we got some really great uh, answers and yeah. questions. And I hope you guys all listening at home, um, I hope you got value out of it, and I hope uh, you guys check these guys out. We're going to put on the website um, all your social media links. Uh, we're going to be giving a couple giveaways. I'm not going to tell you yet, so you're going to have to check the website for that. Um, but follow them online, uh, check out their content, buy subscriptions for them, and anything else, I'm sure they're available to talk to you. That's that local touch. I'm sure they'd love to uh, you know, be approachable, be reachable, and I think that's a really great way um, for, for them to use their marketing to, to stay approached. So I thank you guys. Thanks um, stay thank tuned. You. Thanks, guys. So stay tuned for next week. Uh, we're going to have the show, same time, same day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you then.